Okay, so I've been joined today by Ragnar Tunquist and we are going to catch up on how Dreamfall Chapters is getting on and uh, then maybe later find out a little bit about the new game at Red Thread. But, but first I want to ask, it's been a few weeks, a few months I should say, since um, uh, Dreamfall Chapters scraped through the Kickstarter process. How's the development going? What's, what's new in the world and what have you been talking about recently? Oh god, that's a big question. Um, a lot, I mean, we've been really focused on making the game. The great thing about doing a Kickstarter is that you get all this money and you can just focus on creating the game. Obviously, you have to communicate with the fans and we try to do that as much as possible. Probably not enough, but you know, we try to keep them updated about what's going on. But we've been really focused on just building the game, taking our time, making sure everything looks great and not showing too much because we want it to, to feel right and look right when we do. And we just had a developer session here at uh, REST where we showed the, the opening of the game. I think the first, we raced through it, but it's probably the first 20, 25 minutes of the game. So that was a really exciting thing for us because it's sort of all this stuff that we've sort of been working on in isolation for so long, finally being able to just show it and talk about it and not worry about like PR handlers or publishers or anything like that. We can say and show whatever we want to show and that's been great. Dreamfall is a real fan's favorite. We get that from, you know, just watching now people asking for your autograph and wanting pictures taken with you. Satisfying an audience though like that, that must be very tricky. It's always hard it's a challenge satisfying an audience but our players and our fans have been really kind i mean first off they gave us one and a half million dollars to play with and secondly they've been really patient they uh, everything we show from the game they've been positive about they've been raving about and, and that's great to have this sort of constant confirmation of we're doing the right things you know we're making a game for the fans we're making the game primarily for ourselves and our fans and not worrying about things like markets or marketing campaigns or pr or anything like that we're just thinking as gamers and fans ourselves. So it hasn't been that bad yet. I mean, it might be that the fans gonna start screaming bloody murder as we get closer to release and things are hectic. But but I think for now it's been a joy working with the fans and yeah, just getting this kind of response is overwhelming. I just feel, it feels odd that people are so attached to it and have care so much about it, but I'm really happy about it. What's the dynamic like at Red Thread? I mean, you went from a very established studio working on very different type of games to come back to what I'm assuming is kind of your main love. How, how has that changed the dynamic for you and for your team? I, it's been amazing. I mean, I, the, the last game I did for Funcom was The Secret World and I had a team of over 200 people. And suddenly we're in a studio with uh, six founders and um, 15 people on the team. And it's everybody's sitting in the same office. There are no secrets. Everybody sort of shares everything. And that's been just amazing, like liberating. Um, I mean, I'm working extremely hard. Everybody's working extremely hard. We're doing a lot of stuff, but it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like this collaborative love fest. I mean, it's been, it's been great. I mean, it's, it's challenging. I mean, you have to worry about a lot of stuff that you don't have to worry about when you have sort of a big corporate parent. And, uh, Such as? Uh, you know, paying people, making sure that you, 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 know, you have money for everything all the time. There's nothing to fall back on. I mean, we have our budget and it's pretty, set in stone and we have to make that last and uh, had to take care of things like getting soap and toilet paper for the bathrooms. I mean, it's all the little things that you, you don't think about, but I get to also focus on writing and designing and, and creating and that's great, fantastic. Okay, you're, uh, during your presentation and recently, you've also been talking about a new game that you're working in the studio, which is very different to Dreamfall Chapters. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, the game is called Draugen and it's a first-person survival horror game set on the western coast of Norway in the 1920s. It's sort of a gone home meets amnesia. It's a narrative, atmospheric horror game that's all about sort of mood and Lovecraft in atmosphere and the fjords and mountains of Norway. It's really scary and we showed the first trailer from the game here. Uh, the response was good and we're going to be releasing that trailer next week. 
So it seems to me that um, survival horror games are making a bit of a comeback at the moment, and people really, the, the game style is really resonating with mm. people. Uh, what do you think it is about that kind of particular experience uh, that attracts people, and, and why is it such a good fit for your studio? I'll answer the last one first. I've, I've always been a fan of horror. Like, I grew up reading Lovecraft and Stephen King and Edgar Allan Poe and, uh, and Norwegian and German fairy tales. I love scary stuff. I still, you know, I love curling up on the couch and watching a horror movie and just... It's that feeling it gives you. It's the feeling of being vulnerable, of being tense, emotional. It's sort of the ultimate emotional experience in a lot of ways. And that's why I think it works well for games too, and especially first-person games, where you sort of put down in the middle of the story and the atmosphere and it's it's tailor-made to games being sort of trapped inside the first person view and sort of not knowing what's behind you or what's you know what's outside the window or what's through that crack in the door you know and it's that sort of pure raw emotional experience which I think it makes it perfectly tailored to games and and so and there's been a lot of indie horror games and I think it's because we can create a shorter more focused experience we don't need millions of dollars to do it we can do something that's really good, really small, and really tense and really scary. Okay, so where are you um, when it comes to the kind of the development of this new game? What's Obviously you're just starting out on it, but uh, where are you and, and, and what's the kind of, what's the plan ahead? The plan ahead, I mean, we're at a pretty early stage. There's only a couple of people on the team. Um, we have a prototype up and running. We're sort of in a pre-pre-alpha stage, but we are gonna go on Kickstarter uh, at some point um, because that feels right for this game, it feels right for us as a studio. Um, and hopefully we can get people who like the idea to back us and help us create a game that can come out after Dreamful Chapters, because this is, you know, next in line for us. We're still focusing on Dreamful Chapters, but this is the next game we're doing. All right, well, thank you very much for your time and good luck with the rest of the project. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Where have you gone to, Dreamer? Whose story are you dreaming now? Dreamer, the next chapter in your life begins.